Good morning and welcome to the news on New Day. We're coming to you live from the John Hammond Street at Kanda here in Accra. My name is Judith Brown. In the headlines this morning. Minority in Parliament to press on to get the Bank of Ghana governor removed after their occupation. Bank of Ghana demonstration ended without a meeting with the governor and his deputies. A shaman residents to picket at Roads and Highways Ministry if road rehabilitation works in the municipality don't commence within two months. Also this morning, system failure characterizes first day of lost voter ID card replacements by Electoral Commission. Plus, a war circuit court incarcerated 35-year-old master of ceremonies, 76 years for defiling 12 minors. And on the international front, Niger has declared a three-day of national mourning after 29 soldiers were killed in an attack in the west of the country. Details of these stories and many more coming up shortly. Please do stay with us. And our first story, the minority in parliament say they would press ahead for the removal of the governor of the Bank of Ghana after their Occupy BOG demonstration ended without their meeting with the governor and his deputies. The minority had hoped to march to drum home their dissatisfaction with the running of the central bank, will communicate or communicate with a face-to-face -face meeting with their governor, but that did not happen. Mauna Ebena Ebeta uh, covered the Occupy Bank of Ghana demonstration and reports. In Little Pocket, the protesters gathered at the Obra Sport the traditional convergence point for nearly all demonstrations in Accra. The protesters were charged, incensed over what they say is the wanton dissipation of state funds. There's no money in our pockets. We can't even learn a handwork because if, if we go to go and learn handwork, it's very, very expensive. Your mother cannot pay. Even a chop money to eat. I lost my job on the 23rd of January when the government decided to halt all road construction projects in Ghana. The leadership of the protesters, on the other hand, were insistent they would occupy the BOG head office despite the police order that it won't happen. When we get there, demonstration itself will end there. But the leaders of the demonstration, led by my good son and the NDC minority leadership, will have to be given the opportunity to work into the federal bank to present our petition to the government. And so they began marching towards the headquarters of the Bank of Ghana. Police barricades were mounted along the stretch, triggering significant anger amongst protesters. As a crowd got close to the headquarters, the police presence got bigger, but so did the resolve of the protesters and their leaders to have access to the headquarters. In the end, the police stood their ground, but after a small compromise, the leadership of the minority were allowed into the headquarters to present their petition to the Bank of Ghana governor. But they would be disappointed. The three governors, as we speak, are currently meeting the IMF and, uh, in a meeting, and there's nobody there. So the government has asked that I meet you and take the petition on his behalf. The absence of the governor and his deputies clearly infuriated 
Minority Leader Dr. Kesela Tuforsin. He has decided to disrespect us and his two deputies have also decided to disrespect us by not being here and to receive our petition. We never said we are going to present our petition to the head of security. And now that he has decided to disrespect us, we will not present our petition. We will go and come back again. He wasn't alone in feeling disrespected. It's the height of disrespect that we will come here and he will send the watchman. The watchman at the Bank of Ghana to come and receive the petition. Okay, the watchman should come to Parliament as well. When next he needs anything from Parliament, he should, he should send the watchman. The numbers you've seen today is just the tip of an iceberg. It's the tip of an iceberg. We will not stop this demonstration until Governor Addison respects the people of this country. As the demonstrators dispersed, the police patted themselves at the back for a good job done. However, this, according to the minority, would not be the last of it. Mawina Egbeta, TV3 News, at Mill Street, Accra. Well, despite failing to present a petition to oust the central bank boss and his deputies, organizers of the Occupy Bank of Ghana demonstration are resolute Dr. Addison will have to give up his job. Here is their demand captured in a petition that was never presented. An 18-point petition seeking to remove Governor Addison that never was. Among others, the organizers are pressing that. The Bank of Ghana officials have failed to protect the balance sheet of the central bank in the face of an overbearing and incompetent finance minister and the chairman of the economic management team, Vice President Dr. Elijah Muhammad Baumia. For the first time, all banks in Ghana and non-bank financial institutions declared losses in 2022, with local banks, particularly Westhead. That the BOG committed an unpardonable sin in committing to write off government debt to the tune of 48.4 billion on the blind side of parliament. The group says that the financial sector has virtually collapsed with all the 23 banks in the country recording massive impairment losses of over 18 billion in 2022. The NDC minority does not believe that Governor Addison and his two deputies, who they are accused of mismanaging the Bank of Ghana, are capable of remedying the situation. They want a new set of leadership that is politically neutral and able to perform the functions of a central bank in align with its mandate. Komla Kluche, TV3 News, Accra. Well, let's stay on this particular issue. And an economist at the University of Ghana Business School, Professor Godfred Bob King, has criticized the central bank's governor, attributing the financial challenges faced by the institution to his leadership. His comments come in the midst of growing financial difficulties faced by the central bank, which have fooled the Occupy BOG demonstration on Tuesday. Um, you can associate with a sentiment that um, uh, from a technical and professional point of view, um, it has been our position for some time now that the central bank has been too accommodating. That for this level of crisis, this level of, uh, um, if you see what has happened to the balance sheet of the central bank, it's a reflection of the general economic crisis. And therefore, for something like this to happen, they certainly have to take the, the supportive role of the central bank to physical uh, slippages or excesses for it to happen. And once you see from that perspective, then it means that the checks and balances in terms of monetary side and the fiscal side have been compromised. And therefore, uh, it's very difficult to, 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 to absorb the central bank from all of this. And, and I personally, even before the, the minority held the opposition, uh, more than six months ago or so, we, we had maintained that uh, the central bank's performance has been suboptimal and that they could have done better because um, we, 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 we fought so hard for the, over the years for the independence of the central bank. But what we saw in the last one and a half years to two years it's largely a case of the central bank ceding its independence, essentially selling its birthright to the fiscal side. 
and the result of that is that overrun. So the fiscal, the, the fiscal side has actually overrun the, 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 the monetary side, essentially reducing monetary side to being subordinate to fiscal side. And I think that is not good enough in terms of building institutions because our democracy only has a future to the extent that we are able to build institutions. Institutions that will act as checks and balances on each other. But in this case, you can clearly see a, a, a case of, of the central bank being in bed with the, with the fiscal side, uh, including the mess that we have. Let's head to Sherman now, where residents have given the government a two-month ultimatum to commence rehabilitation works on all the Sherman roads. The residents have threatened to picket at the Ministry of Roads and Highways after um, the uh, demonstration they did yesterday. The group hits major roads in the municipality to express their dissatisfaction with government's failure to address their concerns. They cited the Municipal Assembly traffic light to Presby, Ajikuju Main Road to Lebanon, Zenu Road and Newtown to Afarewa, and Community 22 to Lebanon Inner Road. <laughs> Police protester confrontation ensued with protesters hailing stones at officers. A police officer sustained an injury and one arrest was made. The demonstration continued despite the incident. The assemblyman for the New Kumanthe electoral area, Freeman Chepo, submitted a petition to the municipal chief executive. The scene of the roads has been a mirage, leaving our health and cars at the mercy of the poor roads. If within two calendar months we do not see any action, of works within the municipality, we will organize another march. This time, we will march to the ministry and picket at the Ministry of Roads and Highways. Member of Parliament for Sherman and Snoopy urged governments to address their demands. We all ply the roads. We have fought to draw the government's attention to the bad nature of our roads. But unfortunately, the central government refused to heed to our plight. The MC of a chairman assured the residents that their concerns would be addressed. The government is not going to relent on its orders. We are, we are, we are hoping, say, going forward, Senator uh, Statino, Yabakosu, Ama, Irias, Bia, Engel, Etme, INE. Joseph Armstrong, good, Alugu TV3, a chairman. Now, away from that, the WA Circuit Court has handed a 35-year-old local master of ceremonies a total of 76 years imprisonment in hard labor. Ahmed Rashid, a.k.a. Anata, was found guilty for attempted defilement and defilement of more than 10 minors. The courts presided by Jonathan Avogo made the decision after the convict, a local master of ceremonies was found guilty of defilement contrary to section 101 of the criminal offenses act act 29 the prosecution led by principal state attorney Said abdul shakur had revised the earlier 12 counts of defilement against the convict 12 victims initially reported the unlawful conduct against the convict a medical report by the one municipal hospital officer dr hassan muhammad mubarak confirmed the assault in court on August 23. The court found the convict guilty on all six counts in the first docket and handed Ananta eight years each to be run concurrently. Ahmed Rashid was handed seven years each for three counts in the second docket and additional seven years for the third and final docket, all to run concurrently. These brought total sentence to 76, but 35 years old Ahmed Rashid, a.k.a. Ananta, will serve a total jail term of 22 years imprisonment. I commend the court, I commend you, I commend everybody that is involved. At least we got 22 years. I wish we, we, could, we could do better than that, but that is just what it is. And the court did a very thorough job and we are happy about it. We are happy about the judgment, but when I look at the girls, I really feel sad. Elias Baba Yusif is a complainant in the case.
We are not going to kill him. We just want to let him know that what he has done, you know, is not good, and it will set us a deterrent to everybody, those outside, to also learn from this. Apawas Regional Director of the Department of Gender and Children, Charity Baturi, wants support. For Though we have a shelter that is taking care of kids, uh, girls in particular, and women who are subject to sexual and gender-based violence, but the rehabilitation component is still something we are working on. We'll put together a full house where the children can come in, go, go through the full process of rehabilitation. Now, the Electoral Commission has started the replacement of voter ID cards for people who have lost their or defaced their cards. Now, we're at the former head office of the Electoral Commission, and there are reports of frustration due to system failures. True to the word of workers here at the former office of the Electoral Commission, they were indeed able to register all persons who had come here on the 2nd of October, which marked the end of the registration process. And so today they're starting uh, registration for persons who want to transfer their votes as well as replace their voters' ID cards. And already there are some system irregularities. Before you can replace your card, you have to pay something. Pen cities, an amount of pen cities, and when they tried connecting, I think the network they had issues with that. And this is my first time coming here, and then um, the people coming to transfer our line is not moving. But I don't know why. So this process is supposed to go on for a period of one week, which will end on the 9th of October 2023. But due to challenges with the payment short code, it seems that the queue is not moving. I am not sure we'll be able to register um, so many people. Reason being that the EC officials here do not have direct access to the system that controls the monetary stuff. I think we should explore other avenues of paying for such things. If they will even get a bank that will come and receive on their behalf, that will be good because the bank can assess the platform. You pay with your name, they generate the code for you, then you go and get your replacement. I don't think somebody should come here. And because of payment of 10 CDs, he has to go back and come. And so for now, persons here might just have to wait for the system to work properly before they can continue with the process. Judith Brown, TV3 News, former Electoral Commission headquarters, Accra. Now, the country representative of the World Health Organization to Ghana, Professor Francis Casolo, has called on Ghana's government to investigate an increase in dialysis treatment at Kolibu Teaching Hospital without approval. Now, on the sidelines of the annual general and scientific meeting of the medical superintendents group in Accra, he expressed the need for support for such diseases by the National Health Insurance Scheme. The cost of health care across the world has generally uh, been, moving, been moving up for all sorts of reasons. So we need to see and discuss with the colleagues who are uh, in the, um, uh, uh, for example, Kolebu, to understand the reason for the increase. But like I mentioned, if our health insurance is strong, it can mitigate the cost of even renal care, if the renal care is one of the, on the benefit package of the health insurance. So it is for us to really support the health insurance and to ensure that services such as renal services are included in the benefit package of the health insurance to mitigate the out-of-pocket uh, expenditures that we are beginning to see increase. And if that works, then we will uh, have solved part of the problem of increasing out-of-pocket expenditure that we see with the, uh, the, the dialysis uh, 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 cost. Let's do some sports now. It was a disappointing evening for English teams in the UEFA Champions League on Tuesday as they faced unexpected defeats. Three sports, Oreku and Pofu, has been closely following the matches and brings us this report. For the first time in their 117-year history, Galatasaray have picked up a win on English soil and it came at the expense of Manchester United at Old Trafford as the Red Devils were beaten by three goals to two by the Turkish side. It's a result that leaves Eric Ten Hag's men in danger because now they've lost their first two Champions League group games and currently sit bottom of Group A. For Ten Hag, it's a difficult period, especially 
in his role as he's now lost his last three home games and has lost six games in 10 matches so far this season. There will be a lot of pressure on the coach, especially heading into the international break. And it wasn't the best of Champions League days for English clubs because Arsenal also suffered their first defeat of the season uh, against RC Lund as the French side came from behind to beat the Gunners by two goals to one. Uh, there's some specific Ghanaian interest in there. Uh, Sally Summit, the midfielder for the Black Stars, uh, played the entirety of the game, making the most tackles in the match as well. Uh, for Salih Samed, it it's his first ever Champions League win, and it comes against Arsenal, who themselves are a big side and would be looking uh, to improve uh, this weekend when they play Manchester City in the Premier League. There is some bit of concern as Bukayo Saka uh, struggled with a thigh injury and had to be substituted off in the first half. Looking ahead to Wednesday, England will be hoping for a lot more luck when Newcastle will be playing their first Champions League game in more than 20 years at home when they welcome Kylian Mbappe's Paris Saint-Germain. For Paris Saint-Germain, uh, it's been a good start to the Champions League beating Dortmund, uh, but their form has been fluctuating, especially at home. Defending champions Manchester City will travel to Germany to face RB Leipzig, a side that they comfortably beat in the knockout round last time out. But this time, Pep Guardiola's side are going with a bit of a blip uh, with two losses at the back of their head heading into this one. And uh, Pep Guardiola will be hoping to change their fortunes. And it does look like the Champions League is starting to settle uh, after too much days. Now on the international front, Niger has declared a three-day national mourning period after at least 29 soldiers were killed in an attack in the west of the country. The attack took place near the country's border with Mali during uh, military operations aimed at neutralizing the threat posed by the armed group in the area. Now, attacks by armed groups have plagued Africa's Sahel region for more than 10 years, breaking out in northern Mali in 2012 before spreading to neighboring Niger and Burkina Faso in 2015. The three borders area between Niger, Mali and Burkina Faso is regularly the scene of attacks by fighters affiliated with ISIL and Al-Qaeda. And that's all for the 6 a.m. you see on TV3. My name is Judith Brown. And of course, Roland, Cookie, and Nashoko are here with me in the studio for the rest of New Day. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning Mrs. You? Brown. Great. Mrs. Brown, did you, did you like... No, it's okay. It's, it's fine. I was just going to ask a question. but Because like, there's a glow on Amebo. Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah there's it's... some sort of glow that glow. is surrounding you, on you, favoring you, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. It comes to the marriage thing, yeah? Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, I, I better hurry because I need this type of glue. I do. How are you doing, though? I'm great, and you? How was the demonstration yesterday?